So let's have a look at automations. So if we go to automations, click on create an automation, then you can see Bravo has two editors. So they have the classic editor, which is basically the old editor. You can still use that editor and you can also use the new editor. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the new editor. So I'm going to click here on the new editor. And what you see here is Bravo's email automation editor. So let me quickly walk you through the dashboard of the email automation editor. So first let's start with triggers. So as the name implies, a trigger is what triggers your automation. So how do you want your automation to start? For example, you can choose to start your automation when a contact is added to a list. That's the most obvious trigger. So that is one example. So if someone joins your list, you want this automation to start. As you can see, there are lots of different kinds of triggers. So you can trigger an automation when an email is opened, when a link is clicked in a specific email, when someone unscribes from a specific list. If you also want to use Bravo's CRM tools, you have the deal options. So when a deal is created, when a task is complete. So as you can see, many different options. So for example, this is my website and I sell an online dog training course. It's a six week course. And when someone purchases this course, they get access to this course. So this is the course where people get access to when they purchase is my online dog training course. And as you can see, all kinds of different modules are in this course. So whenever someone purchases this course, I obviously want to send them some emails. I want to make sure they follow up and actually gonna follow the course. So one way to set something up like that. So when someone signs up for my course and to send them emails whenever they start with the course. So Bravo doesn't have a native integration with my online course platform, Thinkific. So I have to use use a third party tool called Zapier. So what did I do? So this is Zapier's dashboard over here. So inside Zapier, I created an automation. So whenever a new user is added to my Thinkific account, I want to update something in Bravo. And what do I want to update? I want to update, so for example, a list. So I want to add that contact to a specific list inside my Bravo account. So in that example, we're going to use the contact is added to the list. So you want to trigger trigger this specific automation based on when a contact is added to a list. Obviously, you want to make sure you're going to choose that same list that you choose inside Zapier over here. You're going to click on save. So now whenever someone purchases my course and they got added to my online course platform, this specific automation inside Bravo will be triggered. And by the way, good to note inside Bravo, you can add multiple triggers. So not every email marketing tool allows you to add multiple triggers. And that's just a quick side note. So I'm going to remove this trigger. So then we have actions. So again, a pretty big list of different actions you can add to your automation. So the most obvious action is obviously send an email. That's what most people use. So you can just drag and drop this email onto the email automation editor. So I'm going to do that. And over here, we can edit that email. So I can click on select the template, or I can start from scratch. So I can design or edit that specific email. So the email I'm sending to the ones that are joining my online course is something among the lines of welcome to the online course, what to expect, what to do in the first week, etc. So in my case, it's a six week course. So I want to send another email one week later. And that's where the rules come in. And here we can add a time delay. So I can just drag and drop that onto the automation editor as well. And here I can say I want to wait for seven days. So one week and I'm going to click on save. I'm going to go back to actions and then I want to send another email one week into the course. So I'm going to drag and drop that other email over here. And again, I can design that email over here. So this is just one example of how you can use Bravo's email automation editor. When someone joins your course, you can send them multiple emails using this specific framework. So one drawback of this specific system we just set up is that it isn't really personalized for that specific user. So the beginning is personalized because the moment they sign up for your course, they will receive an email with instructions on how 
how to get started, what to expect in that first week. But the following email, so for example, this second email after seven days, in this email, we're probably just assuming that they went through the lessons of the first week. And that's obviously an assumption. So for example, maybe that specific person didn't even start the course yet. So if you want to personalize it even further, you can do that. So for example, inside Zapier, you also have the option. So with Thinkific, so for example, to uh, trigger an event when a lesson is completed. So for example, if we go back to my online course, so let's say this is the first week. So for example, this is the last lesson in the first week whenever they transfer to the second week. So maybe I want to trigger an event the moment they complete this specific lesson. So the moment someone completes a lesson, you can add them to a different list inside Bravo. So we're going to go back to our automation editor over here. And instead of just a regular time delay, we're going to use this rule over here because we're going to wait until someone is added to that specific list before we're going to send that second email. So we're going to drag this onto the automation editor and then we're going to tweak these settings. So we're going to click on contacts and then contact added to the list. And then we're going to select that list we just created. So I'm going to click on save. So here's a setting. If the event does not happen, how long do you want to wait? So I'm just going to say 12 months. I want to give them plenty of time to complete that first week. So I'm going to click on save. And now we're going to go back to actions and now we can send that second email over here. So whenever someone completes that lesson, we want them to complete then and only then we're going to send that second email. But again, this is a little bit more advanced. You can also use that first example. So then inside the automation dashboard, we were now in the builder section. We also have the audience section. And here there is the setting. Do you want a contact to re-enter this specific automation after the exit this specific automation. So if you do want them to re-enter, then you have to enable this specific setting. So for example, in my case, so whenever someone completes my online course, do I want them to re-enter whenever they get added again to my course? So in, in my case, that will never happen. Whenever someone purchases my course, they are not going to purchase it again, probably. Um, but anyhow, it, it doesn't hurt to enable the setting. Let's say someone does purchase it again. Uh, I don't mind them to go uh, through this automation again, right? So I want to allow a contact to re-entry my automation. Then there are some exit conditions. So for example, do you want a contact to leave this automation before they complete the entire automation? So in this example, so for my online course, I can't think of any reason why I want to delete or remove a contact from this specific automation. But there are other situations where you do want to use the exit condition. So one example is, so let's say someone joins your newsletter because you're giving away a coupon code for your store. And let's say this automation you're building right here has only one goal and that is to make sure that specific contact uses that coupon code and whenever they purchase something from your store using that coupon code, you want to remove them from all these promotional emails you have going on in this specific list. You don't want to keep reminding them of using that specific coupon code if they already used it, right? So in that case, a really good reason to exit that specific contact is if they used your coupon code or if they made a purchase in your store. That is a really good example of when to use an exit condition. So what I shared in this video is just one of the many topics I cover in my Bravo course called Bravo University. And I basically want to show you everything Bravo can do, like using the form builder. I want to show you Bravo segmentation builder, the CRM features Bravo offers. So basically all of Bravo's features you see on the left hand side on the dashboard. 